We made it to Florence, Italy, and we probably pick the coolest campsite ever to go explore the city in. Today we're hopping on a shuttle bus directly from our campsite and going into the city of Florence. The shuttle bus is leaving in like two and a half minutes. We're waiting on Alyssa and Ellie to finish feeding. I hope they're gonna make it. Here she comes. <laughs> we got tickets. <laughs> oh, and it's here. Yeah, they're they're waiting on us. Seriously? We told them we had a cute baby. Oh man. No, not really. But they're I was yeah, I hope to, there's room. I was trying so hard. She threw up everywhere. <laughs> oh, God. We're Heath and Alyssa. We started RVing during our honeymoon in 2014 and instantly fell in love with travel. We full-time RVed for five years in the States before coming up with the crazy idea of RVing in foreign countries. In this series, we're RVing across Italy with our four-month-old daughter, Ellie. We're camping in the city of Florence and our friend Michelle gave us a day tour map. So we are going to follow her instructions. We've got six or seven stops that we're going to make exploring the city of Florence today. The first stop is the Piazzale Michelangelo. That is? According to Michelle's walking tour. Oh, this is on the tour? That's the gate of St. Nicholas. Is St. Nicholas like, like jolly old? Um, this is Santa Claus's house. <laughs> no, I have no idea. I can do this. Watch your back. We're playing a game. Guess how old. Guess, Guess how old this is. I said 1200, John said 1352. <laughs> Very precise. 1308. Closest without going over is Heath with 1324. Woo! The actual number is? 1324. Oh. That, that was it. Sorry. I win a gelato. biggest cities that we've been in so far in Italy have been Venice and now Florence and one of my favorite parts about visiting both of them have been getting a higher vantage point and just looking out at the entire city and just seeing all the amazing architecture that was built so long ago looking at this building the gate right now which looks like a castle and looking at the Duomo I love Florence we barely got to explore this place but it's incredible Michelle's walking to her starting off real steep yeah we started way down at the river and we've been going just straight uphill to try to get up to this Piazzale, but the view is incredible. We can see pretty much every stop that we're going to make today. How's it going? Good. We're ready to switch to Carrie's Ellie. It's, it's only like 11, 10 a.m. I took the steep part of the day. <laughs> Our next stop is the Gelateria Artigianale La Strega Nocciola. I understand the word gelato and hazelnut. Oh wait, I, wa <laughs> I wasn't recording. Could you say that one more time? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can see like the wall that used to surround the city of Florence. Oh you can see wow. It and the trees out there. Oh, yeah. So what I learned from Google is that on six different occasions, they built walls around the city of Florence. And then whenever it became the capital of Italy, because it was briefly the capital of Italy, they demolished all of the walls in order to make a road around the city. So, that's just part of the remains of one of the walls. I don't know which one. The southeast wall. The southeast wall. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> when I pictured Italy before I came here, this is exactly what I pictured. Like, stone roads, tiny little roads, with these just big, colorful, golden buildings, the tiles and all the ornateness around it. I really will move to Italy if you want. Okay. People kayaking underneath it. This is the most unique bridge I've ever seen in my entire life. And probably true for most people. We learned just before getting here that Florence is credited as the birthplace of gelato, aka they're the greatest people in human history as far as I'm concerned but we are going to do a gelato crawl this morning or at least until we get completely full. So we are waiting on the first gelato shop of the day to open up because we got here too early. We're gonna be the first customers. It's gonna be so fresh. I'm sure it is totally fresh. Two minutes oh, to wait. 
crema aran arancho. Yeah. arancho. Orange and egg cream. Wait, mm -hmm. don't try it also. I thought we were gonna share. <laughs> Do you want to try this one too? I do. Wow, this is hazelnut. This is the one that they're known for. And if you want to get chocolate flavors, it's okay. It's terrible. <laughs> you shouldn't eat any of it. Oh, that one's really that good. One cinnamon. Yeah. Vori uh, un. Azteca. Azteca. Y un. La Not. Not. No. 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 I feel embarrassed. I'm not <laughs> so bad. No, you tried. That's what counts. I want to eat it. <laughs> oh my god. They're really good gelato places. Put this little cookie on top. Yeah, it's like a cone cookie. This is the best thing I've ever had in my entire life. You better share. Mm -hmm. I will. Our first gelato of the day, I'm going to give it a 9.5 on a scale of 10. Just because I want to leave a little bit of margin of room for if something <laughs> comes along, it just blows me away. But ambiance was on point. We're right next to the bridge. And it's it's incredible. And plus, Ellie's asleep, so she doesn't. Usually, she cries whenever I eat gelato in front of her, so she doesn't even know that's happening. Thinking that I have to go with Heath with the 9.5 rating. Mm -hmm. This is fantastic gelato. I want to leave a little bit of room for there to be a superior option, which I'm hoping there will be. I'd love to get a 10. I'm giving a 9.7 to the white chocolate oh, really? cinnamon. It's fantastic. Very creamy. Top notch spot. Thank you, Michelle. Good start. Crossing the Ponte Vecchio, this bridge was built. Actually, when was this bridge built? Oh. The original Ponte Vecchio that we're on was built in 674, and the replacement bridge that we're on right now is built in the 1300s. And originally during World War II, the, a lot of the bridges in Florence were bombed, but apparently Adolf Hitler did not want to destroy this one because it was too big. I'm glad he didn't because it is incredible. The fourth stop on Michelle's list, the Piazzale degli Uffizi. So this Piazzale degli Uffizi is a statue showcase. So there are statues on all these columns all the way around this courtyard and they're all of Florentines, people from Florence who have made a big impact in history. So, so far we've seen Galileo, Leonardo da Vinci is somewhere around here, I gotta go find him. So kind of just a way to honor all the people that have made an impact in history in this city. We actually don't know where we are right now. We just saw these big, beautiful doorways and we walked inside because everyone else was. This is so beautiful. It's just like this open air building with all this artwork on the walls. Where did we just end up? I have no idea. Whatever this place is, someone just got married here. There's like a whole wedding party right there. There's rice and flowers everywhere on the ground. It's cool. I'm on my Okay, we made it out of the unknown building. We're walking through the Piazza della Signora. And this is really where you can see kind of the Renaissance influence. You can see all these statues behind me, right? There is a replica of the statue of David, which I've learned used to be outside in this area, but has since been moved inside to protect it because it's that cool. That right there. That's the awesome building we just walked in. I've lost track of how many stops we made, but like our fifth or sixth stop, wherever we are now, is Piazza della Repubblica. Kiss that and explain it. Piazza is like a town square. Here in Florence, the old meets the new. Apple store. Old buildings. And merry-go-round. We just turned around the corner and then everybody just goes, wow. We're just walking up to the Duomo now in Florence. Ellie just pooped on me, but this view is beautiful. At first glance, wow. just wow. The Duomo, the one thing, actually know a couple things about this Duomo. One of them is that it took over 140 years to complete. And just based off of that fact alone, I'm expecting a magnificent structure. But just at first glance, this building is awe-inspiring. We're almost through Michelle's self-guided walking tour of Florence. It's been going fantastic. We'll drop the link in the video. But we are actually not supposed to get to the Duomo just yet. We have one more stop, which is... Pizza and milk. <laughs> We are at 
our very last stop for the day, the Duomo here in the center of Florence. It is easily the most stunning piece of architecture I've ever seen. Also, Peter waited in line for us. It's free to get in, but there's a very long line. So the family in Florence, the main family in Florence and the main family in Siena hated each other, apparently. So they both built Duomo's in each of their cities and they were kind of competing to see who could build the most beautiful one. This one here in Florence was built by the Medici's and so far it's winning, but I haven't been to Siena yet. very quiet in there. It was one of the most magnificent buildings I've ever seen in my life. It was took over 140 years to make this building and it was built in like four different stages and we were just trying to imagine like the generations of families who worked on this thing. It's just mind-blowing and the fact that it's been here since 1400s. Crazy. If you visit Florence you have to stop by the way. I got half coffee and then half this one that has almonds and cashews and pistachios, all sorts of stuff in it. Then I got a coffee back room. Oh, oh mine looks beautiful. Little, da little dance. <laughs> Gelato. Oh, I'm so excited. There's a car coming. Sorry. <laughs> I always forget these are roads. Yeah, I know. It seems like it's all soft. I don't even want to eat this. It's so pretty. Second gelato of the day. It's really, really good. I would say that it's not quite as good as my first one though. I agree. The one this morning was better. I'm gonna rank this one at a 6.5. It could be- Wow, really that low? Really? Yeah. I would say at least an eight. I'm pretty much the Simon of gelato. We've made it through Michelle's entire self-guided walking tour. Michelle, you're amazing. Thank you so awesome. much for sending us the Google link to your self-guided walking tour. If you happen to be ever over in Florence, we'll put a link in the video so you can come check out Michelle's self-guided walking tour around Florence. But overall, the city was incredible. We were here on a Saturday, so it, it was, was packed. It was, it was so busy. It was insanely packed, but I have a feeling that the city is always going to be buzzing. So we get to experience it in its native state, I would say today, but we have a quick shuttle ride back to our campground and then we're off to Siena. We forgot our pass bar for the day, but then we got a baby store. She doesn't want it. It tastes like pizza. <laughs> 